What's going on everyone? Ray Del Vecchio here from WebsiteProfitCourse.com and on my website and YouTube channel I mostly share my thoughts on freelancing with local clients and managing their small business websites. I've also had plenty of great conversations with, with my subscribers and you guys come from all, all backgrounds. I've heard from graphic designers, people who majored in computer science, engineering, people who work in IT, students, and even retirees that are just looking to make a little extra money. And I would say probably 80 to 90% of you are at the beginning of your journey. And I've had many people ask about the difference between web design and development. And this is, this is an interesting question because there's a lot of big differences, but there's also plenty of overlap between the two. And you might not know which to choose unless you kind of dig into each of them. So that's what I want to talk about in today's video. And chances are, if you're getting into web design or development, you just have a love for websites. And that's, that's how I was. I majored in computer engineering, and the vast majority of my classes had to do with much lower level stuff. You know, some of my classes were, you know, electromagnetics, digital signal processing, electrical networks, learning how circuits work. And then when I went for my master's degree at the University of Delaware, I did circuit board design. I did a little bit of work with solar energy and also security. Throughout that entire time, I feel like I have a really great background on how you know electrical systems and technology work, but I always wanted to work on more application level stuff. And what I noticed in hindsight is that my favorite things were 2D design. You know, I really liked the circuit board design because that was layout. And then actually my freshman year of college was probably my two favorite classes and that's when I learned programming. We learned C++ and I took an elective called computer art and that's where I learned Photoshop and Illustrator. And throughout my college career I, I was just fascinated by websites and how they worked and as a hobby I learned HTML. And I think a lot of people that get into web development have this path. You know, I don't think that many people major. I don't even know if web development's a major in colleges nowadays. They probably have you know courses in community college and maybe you know regular universities. But I think a lot of people get into it on the side because they're interested in programming or some of the components that make up web development or web design. And just to break it down really simply. You know, all a website is is an interaction between the user's browser and the web server that's hosting that website. And I think the best way to get started is just to view a lot of websites, break them down and figure out what technologies they're using. And my favorite um, extension on Chrome to do this is called Wappalizer. When you load a website, you can just click the button and it'll tell you all the technologies that that website is built from. And then when you become familiar with them, you'll start to get good at predicting whether or not a website is built from scratch, whether it's hand coded, or whether it's using a platform such as WordPress. And I think the other question you gotta ask yourself is, what do you want to work with more? Do you wanna work on the content side or do you wanna work on the code side? So most of my experience is as a web designer, even though I think I have a good concept of web development since I really started from code, you know, my first introduction to web design was learning HTML and I learned it's C++ a much harder code language before that so there's these are some things to consider if you want to become a web designer and that's you know the main thing you have to do is create the layout in the browser and years ago one of the most popular programs to do this was Adobe Dreamweaver and frankly I hated that because I wanted to do things from scratch I wanted to do everything with HTML and after I learned HTML, I learned CSS, which that's how you style a website and give it the design. Now, over the years, Adobe Dreamweaver, it might still be out there, but it's definitely become less and less popular if it is. And my you know, choice every single time now is WordPress when I'm building a website because it gives you the platform to create without having to do things from scratch and you don't even need to know code. When it comes to creating the layout, you almost always want to start with the content. You want to build the layout around the content and not create a design and then fit in the content to your design. So in order to do that, it's also important that you need to know basic image editing, 
like I said, I've used Photoshop since college, but there's obviously other examples out there. I think I created a video a couple of years ago using one called Pixlr. I believe that was P-I-X-L-R. You might want to check that out or Google it if you don't have Photoshop. But it's good to know how to edit images and make sure you're not uploading massive images to a website because speed is a really big factor in creating a good web design. The other thing is that you may eventually get into managing content. And like I said, WordPress is much, much better at doing a content-based website versus building it from scratch with HTML. And the same goes for SEO, search engine optimization. If you want to drive traffic to that website after it's launched, a lot of web designers offer that as an add-on service. And code knowledge is a plus. It's definitely good if you're you know, debugging something, something's not working, or if you need to implement something really simple that you know can't be done with a plugin that easily but it might only be a couple lines of code you know I find this all the time like I, I always customize using CSS code on my websites and as a rule of thumb it's it's just good to know the underlying system and how it operates even if you're not going in there every day and tinkering now with web development your main objective there is to write code and you're going to implement custom functions with that code. So code knowledge is really a prerequisite and that might be PHP, MySQL, Ruby, and on the front end side, I should have included this in the list, but you're probably going to want to know JavaScript and some JavaScript libraries. So for instance, the one that I learned many years ago was jQuery. I know nowadays there's a bunch of others like um, Bootstrap and React. I, I really don't know much about them, but I've just heard a lot about them, you know, just from reading articles and seeing them being talked about a lot. In addition to that, you're, you're probably going to be building on existing code, somebody else's code. So it's important that you have a good understanding of how things work. And then on top of that, you want to build documentation on that code. Make sure you're adding comments to the code because... Since code is a little bit more complicated, say you write a piece of code and then you go back to it two weeks later, there's a high probability that you're going to forget how things are working unless you include a few comments in plain English. You may also be coding for performance. So maybe you have a website and it operates fine, but you want to increase the performance of the code in the back end. So that's another thing that web developers might do. Design knowledge is, is a plus because if you're a web developer, your code is going to be output to a website. But chances are those roles are going to be separated and you might be interacting with a graphic designer. So even though you might not be doing the design, it's good to have an idea of the design that's going to be in place and communicate with people that know a little bit more about graphic design. And the final thing here is does your title really matter? And the fu funny thing is when I first started freelancing, the first thing I did was create my portfolio website along with business cards and I had no idea what to put as my title on the business card. I was going between you know business owner, president, web developer, web designer. I, I had no idea and the truth of the matter is it's not a big deal if you're freelancing. It's a much bigger deal if you want a job because you're gonna have to fit within a company's existing system and technical infrastructure. So there's, you know, you can't go into a job as a web developer if you don't know the code languages behind the scenes. But when it comes to freelancing, you're generally solving smaller problems and specific problems from scratch. And there's many ways to solve a problem. You don't have to use one particular code language. You don't have to do the work yourself. Sometimes you got to think like a business owner and you have to be creative. And a good example of this is one of the first projects I did, I remember somebody requested a function that I had no idea how to implement. I pretty much told them that I could do it without knowing what to do behind the scenes. And I, I started researching, I was going to custom code it. And then I found, I think two WordPress plugins that I had to install and get them working together. And it ended up you know, taking me maybe an hour or two's worth of work when it probably would have taken something like 10 to 15 hours had I custom coded it. So as a business owner, you know, you need to create the leverage. You're not always doing the hands-on work. And one of my weak points is outsourcing. I've gotten a little bit better at it in the past year, but you know, there's plenty of people who 
do web development or web design, but they're not actually doing the work. They're just outsourcing it to people on you know freelance networks or locally. So it all really depends on what your goal is. And like I said, my main objective is to get people freelancing. I want you to work for yourself because ultimately, you know, you can make a lot of money in a web development job, but you're still restrained on the time side. You know, you're still trading your time for money, even if it's at a higher hourly rate, but you're not making money outside of your job and you're really not creating leverage to, to get that time freedom in your life. So I want more people to at least consider freelancing and put yourself out there, see what it's like to work with other people. And I go through my entire business plan through a premium membership on my website. So if you want to learn more about that, go to websiteprofitcourse.com slash plan. And if you're just getting started and you want to see some of the tools that I use, you can download a free giveaway on my homepage. Just go to websiteprofitcourse.com and sign up there and I'll send you that PDF showing you how I structure my business and all the services that I use to manage client websites. I hope you found this video helpful and if you have experience with either of these, I'd love for you to leave a comment. Let me know what you think about web design or web development, what you enjoy more, and why you've chosen the path that you're on currently. Don't forget to give this video a thumbs up and be sure to subscribe to my channel to get future videos on web design freelancing. Thanks so much for watching this video today and I hope you join me on the next one.